Happy New Year, everyone, and I hope you're having a blast. 2021 was a great year for my YouTube channel. It was the year that would define if I would grow and continue with it or not. And well, it did, and quite a lot. And 2022 is gonna be even a better year. Great things are coming your way. I have already listed a few topics what I will cover in this year. So one, the so long and highly requested topic called vibrato. So finally, I'm gonna make a video about vibrato. How to level up arpeggios, how to master scales, how to improve this, that, that, that. I'm gonna complete the Fayar series. Today we're gonna do number 37, but I'm gonna do all 60. And I will even make reaction videos about my own performances. So I put a performance of me and I will react on it and kind of giving myself a masterclass. This is gonna be a new feature. Also, I took a couple of days off and it gave me the chance to read a book that I always wanted to read, which is the book by Janor Starker. It's a great book, and by the way, I will review this. And in that book, he is mentioning about the method that he wrote, which is an organized method for string playing. So I'm thinking also to cover that whole method by him. Starker's playing, well, many people criticize him, not everybody loves him, but we have to admit, he left to us a legacy and also for the cello world. Anyway, you guys are gonna love this. So get prepared, take your cello, grab your bow, because we are going to crush this. So let me know in the comment section below if you're in or if you're out. And if you're new here on this channel and this is what you want, so to become better in what you're doing, to become more disciplined into your cello studies and you just want to become better, doesn't matter if you are playing the cello as a hobby or as a professional, then consider to subscribe. And Patreon support is also very welcome. Any donation is gonna help me to create more great videos. Link is in the video description below. Okay guys, I am ready for it. I hope you're ready for it too. So let's dive right into our first lesson of this year. VR studies of the young cellist number 37, study for the left hand, fifth position. Nice one, feeling my fingers already becoming stronger. Okay, but how do we approach this exercise? Obviously, we need to approach this step by step. But anyway, let's start with the right hand. I know it's a study for the left hand, but there is something very crucial I need to say for the right hand. You're probably asking me why the heck I'm doing right now right hand. This is a study for the left hand. Well, you're gonna be very thankful for me that I'm mentioning this. So there are two common mistakes when it comes to right hand. One, we do not stay straight on one line. And two, what often happens is that we don't play this with a nice, beautiful sound, timbre, legato, and so on. So let's start with point number one. It is very important to stay very organized and disciplined when you use the bow in this exercise. Not only in this exercise, but in general, in cello playing. 
people often don't notice that they're swimming with the bow when they're playing. What do I mean with swimming? I'll show you. So that was swimming with the bow. Now, let's see when we play this more or less straight. I'm saying more or less because 100% or being perfect in this also doesn't exist. Let's see when we do it more or less with a straight bow. So now we are talking about a better sound, better control, a continuously sound and so on. So moral of the story is, this has to do a lot with the opening of your elbow. So that one here, see the motion? Many people between us tend to play with the whole arm and that is wrong. When we reach more or less the middle of the bow, we start to open up that part. Can you see? And this is where the index finger, so when we come to the middle, right, we start to open and there is where the index finger starts to enter. So where we put, I mean, you can call it pressure, you can call it a little bit more weight pouring in, whatever, but the index finger is under control over here in order to maintain the sound until the tip of the bow. So let me show you here an example with an open string. So there we go. Now we start to open bit by bit gradually and our index finger is starting to take over it. See how my index finger goes? So it's not like at the frog, like that. Like this. So please avoid to use the whole arm like this. See how my bow is completely wrong. Once you have this under control, then it's going to be easier to understand the second point that I had for the right hand, which is to play this with a nice legato, with a nice sound and so on. What I highly recommend is to use a mirror if you have one. It's optional. It's not really necessary, but it would be very useful to have a mirror in front of you. So you can watch the mechanics and observe the motion. And the more you do it, the more you understand it and the more it will become natural. So a mirror would be nice to have in front of you. Okay, so these were two points that I wanted to say for the right hand. So this is extremely important. So please avoid that thing to use the whole arm. No, try to find that opening, that thing. It's like when you want to beat someone. Someone is annoying you next door and you just want to give him a smash. So that kind of motion. Right, let's go now to the left hand. So here in the study, in the left hand, you will not find so many difficulties. The right hand usually takes more time than the left hand. But let me point you a couple of things so that you know on what to pay attention when you practice. One, strong, articulated, but in the meantime, flexible fingers. If you want to have a nice, clean, precise intonation and sound, then left hand articulation is very important. I'm gonna play you two examples, one with strong left hand and another one a jelly left hand and find the difference for yourself. to hammer the fingers, that's how I call it. I need to hear this sound. So see that hammering, that, and also plucking. So when you leave the left, so when you hit the first note, so this, then you wanna pluck it to your left, see? Hammer back, hammer. Okay, there's a shift, so there's no way to hammer that. Hammer. Now we're gonna take the pinky out, so we're gonna pluck it away. So this is pretty useful, one more time. 
pluck it away, hammer, pluck, so to your left. So anyway, try it out by yourself. If you hear these sounds, then it means you're doing the right way. In the beginning, it might get a little bit confused, but as usual, the more you do it, the more you train this, the more you drill this, the more natural it will become. Second point, shiftings or position changes. A common mistake here that beginners do is that they move with the whole arm when they do position changes. So like that. So the whole mechanism goes together and there where it's going wrong. So please avoid to use the whole arm when you're doing position changes because you're playing with luck here. It can be that once or twice you're gonna hit the right note, but also it can happen that it's gonna be completely out of tune and it's gonna be all over the place. So try to avoid it, please. So try to use minimal movement. It's all about this. Can you see the opening also? So not like that. No big movements, all quite small movements. In cello playing in general, everything is about anticipation. And here in this case, we do have left hand anticipation. So look what I do when we have these small distance shifts. See how I squeeze my finger? So I squeeze and then I pull it out. Gone. So this is what happens. People have to do this. So see, already it's out of tune. No, we want to use minimal movements. There you go. And the same thing happens backwards. But opposite. So we're squeezing our pinky. So in so avoid. So see, I did like that, and then it doesn't work. So Right, so did you notice what I did? And please, again, try to avoid the whole arm thing. Find this opening here. The rest is on you, my friends. Now the third thing, when to stretch your fingers. There are some moments here in this study that we need to spread or stretch a little bit our fingers, right? And as mentioned before, cello playing, it's all about anticipating things. So here we have the same thing. See that one? That was a small stretch. But that was our talking about. Left hand anticipation. One more time. Let's see if you get this. Shift. See, third finger is ready. Because if we wait until the last moment, this will happen. So see, the pitch is not good enough. Get ready. What can help also is to move a little bit your hand forward in order to get a bigger, a bigger spread. 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 But anyway, the most important thing is that again, left hand anticipation. So know what is gonna be the next note. Be always prepared. Be one step further than the music. And afterwards, we have another example. So I just played this uh, near the ending of the second line. Now we start at the third line. So I'm already on position. Because if I'm not on position, this will happen. So see, you're not getting this perfect pitch. Then we have another example in the third line. So uh, here, that one. So make sure that you open it. Don't open too much because or else you're gonna get an E flat instead of a D. Also not. So it would be useful if you can analyze here in the score where we have these spreading fingers and practice them separately. 
only separately so part per part all right that'll be it for today's lesson it's not such a difficult study for the rest this study is very similar to another study that i have already covered last year which is the number 15 from this same book you can find the video right here on this card if you click on it it will direct you immediately to this video so maybe there you also can find a couple of things uh, what I explain. So again, I'm really looking forward for upcoming big projects with you. So are you in or are you out? Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.